Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, FAA Administrator Michael Huerta plans to stay on with the FAA, Women in Aviation Hall of Fame inductees announced, another Subsonics personal jet takes flight. I'm Bree Cross, it's December 21st, 2016, and this is Airborne Limited. When FAA Administrator Michael Huerta introduced the revised Part 23 rules during an online briefing last week, he was questioned at the end of the briefing by a Politico reporter about his continued status as the FAA Administrator based on the recent election results. Huerta said he planned to stay on after the administration shifts from President Obama to President Trump January 20th. The FAA Administrator is by law appointed to a five-year term, independent of the person in the White House, and Huerta's term will not expire until 2018. He said during the news conference he is looking forward to the next year. In responding to the question from the reporter, Administrator Huerta said, quote, We have a lot of things we can be proud of. Neither President-elect Trump nor his transition team have given any indication about what their intentions are for the FAA or who might be next in line for the job. Women in Aviation International has selected the 2017 inductees into the International Pioneer Hall of Fame. These women will be honored at the 28th Annual International Women in Aviation Conference, which will be held March 2nd through the 4th, 2017, at Disney's Coronado Springs Resort in Lake Buena Vista, Florida. WAI President Dr. Peggy Chabrian said, quote, Honoring these women and chronicling their achievements is an important mission for Women in Aviation International. Not only have these women had great individual accomplishments, but they have paved the way for other women to have similar success. The 2017 Pioneer Hall of Fame inductees are the first class of women naval aviators chosen in 1973 who were Judith Neufer, Barbara Allen, Jane Skills, Anna Marie Scott, Jolene Drag, and Rosemary Mirams. These women paved the way for women to participate in a naval aviation. Lieutenant General Stacey Harris, who is the highest ranking African American woman military pilot in all the United States Armed Forces, and Elizabeth Betty Everett's Green, now deceased, who was a trailblazer in humanitarian and missionary flying. She also served as a WASP during World War II and went on to help found the Mission Aviation Fellowship. After the break, the thrill of flying your own personal jet. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. The Bristel Light Sport Aircraft is what you are looking for. The Bristel is wider than a Cirrus, faster than a Skyhawk, offers more storage than a Husky, and comes standard with Garmin Avionics. So what are you waiting for? Visit Bristel.com to find out how you can get into a Bristel today. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Explore no limits flying in the FAA certified Sea Ray Amphibious LSA. One of the top three best selling LSAs in the U.S., Progressive Aerodyne Sea Ray comes equipped with a Rotax engine and exhibits extraordinary handling on land, water, and in the air. Check it out at www.searay.com. Welcome back. If you would like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. It's very hard not to be impressed by the little Subsonics jet that is produced by the Sonics Aircraft Company as the ultimate kit-built Walter Mitty machine. Sonics recently published on their website that another customer-built Subsonics personal jet has flown. The proud builder and owner is Andrew San Marco of Fairfield, Connecticut, whose Subsonics flew for the first time on December 2nd. This is the second kit-built Subsonics to fly. San Marco said that the first flight was made with Bob O'Haver at the controls. After the 30-minute initial flight, San Marco said, quote, I jumped in for a 35-minute flight over the Long Island Sound. The plane flew flawlessly and handled far greater than I could have expected. The handling characteristics were smooth. Landing the plane was much easier than I had anticipated. We at ANN congratulate Andrew for his achievement in building the airplane and being a part of the first flight process. With some 3,000 Aero TV programs webcast to cyberspace, sometimes it can be fun to look back and enjoy some of the places we've seen, the flyers we've met, and the planes we've flown. 
Here's a look at one of our favorite Arrow TV classic episodes. We have one of uh, 10 flyable B-17s in the United States, Texas Raiders B-17G, built by Douglas Aircraft. In this video, we get a great look at the CAF B-17 Texas Raiders, and we also learn about the commemorative Air Force and their mission. Search Texas Raiders B-17 at Oshkosh on Aero TV's news channel. After these messages, Facebook's Akila drone cause of crash is determined. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115 horsepower turbocharged airplane at airplanefactory.com. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Build and fly with the most exciting line of kit aircraft on the market, the Sonics Aircraft B models. The B models offer more room and comfort, more fuel, more panel space, more engine choices, and the same great Sonics Aircraft flight characteristics. Learn more at sonicsaircraft.com. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. The NTSB has determined that the downing of the solar-powered Facebook Aquila drone is attributed to strong winds which caused the aircraft's wings to structurally fail. A contributing factor also included the autopilot over controlling the aircraft. The technology firm Swiss Space Systems has been declared bankrupt by a civil court, according to multiple media reports. The company had hoped to launch small satellites aboard reusable launchers resembling miniature space shuttles carried by an Airbus aircraft. Leonardo Finn Mechanica has completed the first flight of the SW-4 solo remotely piloted helicopter. This flight begins the test campaign in order to verify the aircraft's operational characteristics and validate flight procedures in both normal and emergency conditions. There will be no air show in 2017 at Chicago Rockford International Airport, and the future of the event is in doubt. A concern is that traffic congestion incurred by Airfest would put a heavy burden on the operations of new businesses on the airport. The United States has filed an appeal in the ruling of the World Trade Organization accusing Boeing of receiving prohibited tax incentive subsidies from the state of Washington. Boeing said earlier that they were confident the ruling would be reversed. Well, that's the trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. A group of pilots flying vintage aircraft from the 1920s and 1930s has landed in Cape Town, South Africa at the end of the Vintage Air Rally. The BBC reports that the Crete to Cape rally began November 11th on the island of Crete. Along the way, the aircraft landed beside the pyramids in Egypt and flew over Mount Kilimanjaro before arriving in Cape Town, South Africa. The rally website describes the event as flying low along the Nile from Cairo to Khartoum, past the highlands of Ethiopia before the plains of Kenya and the home of African aviation in Nairobi. Along the way, one of the aircraft reportedly suffered total engine failure, while another pilot got lost twice. That pilot was arrested in Ethiopia and landed in South Sudan rather than his intended landing site of Kenya, but hey, nobody's perfect. According to the event's Facebook page, seven of the 11 aircraft that started the rally finished in Cape Town late last week. The winner of the rally was Pedro Langton of Team SoCal from Canada and his Travel Air 4000 biplane. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe, and don't forget to check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. We'll see you tomorrow.